Dear Madam, further to our telephone conversation of last night, this is to confirm the booking of my services for a children's party at your residence on Saturday next at 3.30. Fernie, not so much an act, more a way of life. Though a way of life that sadly is dying out now, journeying forward into the past, the traveling entertainer. With the props at his back and the stage where he finds it, he views the whole world through a rose-colored windscreen. Thanking you for the engagement, I remain yours faithfully, Fernie. Twenty years ago, Fernie was a Yorkshireman, but that was before he came over here to become Ireland's leading children's entertainer. And if you don't believe he's that, just ask the kids. Through the north and the south of Ireland, the east and the west, Fernie has been there, travelling over half a million miles on his motorbikes, through the hill and the bog and the city street and the greenery of young imaginations. Fernie lives in the little village of Glenarm, one of the nine glens of Antrim, just 30 odd miles from Belfast. A different world, you might think, so close. And yet, with harsh reality just out beyond there over the wall, Fernie still maintains his make believe and his motorbikes. It's hard to say really how I started entertaining and doing magic because it sort of grew up with me really. I had a fairly good singing voice as a boy, as a young fellow, but I, I contracted diphtheria when I was about 12 or 13 years of age and that did spoil my voice. And I still wanted to do something at the Christmas party at school, so I did a bit of magic, which surprisingly took even better than I thought it would. And I found I was interested in magic. Uh, to such an extent, at last, that most of my spending money and any other money I could beg, borrow or steal went into it as well. Uh, now, of course, I'm a professional and I, I do put more money into it than before, but it is now put in with partly an eye on the box office, what is more or less practical, because it's possible to buy a lot of magic props which one can't use. For instance, um, the television itself, alas, can be an enemy of a magician, because you can find yourself buying props which have just been performed on television and no one wants to see them. They want to see something they haven't seen before. This means keeping quite a big stock of props, admittedly. Uh, I came over here just after the war ended because I thought there was a market for entertainment in Ireland for the kind of things which I had. At that time, I just joined a touring company, a drama variety company. I wasn't very good on the drama, although I learned a little of it. My main line was variety ventriloquism and uh, magic and escapology and a bit of mentalism too. This company, by the way, were the best, I think, at drama I've seen in my life. But alas, they were the worst business people I'd ever met. Their advertising was deplorable and they went out of business after about three months. I transferred then to another company, uh, a famous flash parade, which Rick Loving ran, and she was professional 100%. I really enjoyed my stay with her. And then when she packed up, I came to Northern Ireland to work for a show which went bust after precisely three nights. And I decided then to start my one-man show, which I did start with a few props and a pedal cycle, taking halls and then later on schools and working entirely on my own, which I have done ever since, and that's over 20 years ago. See now, all oh, these lovely flowers I have here. Of course, there's nothing very magical about a bunch of white flowers, boys and girls, is there? Not really. But there is something magical, however, about this balloon. I think the main thing in children's entertaining is 
to get their interest right at the very start. It can be something simple, but it should be something visual. You have to remember that your own voice may have a different accent to which the children are used to in the, in the first place. Also, small children are sometimes a little frightened by the size of an adult beside them. When I bring children out to help me, I usually bend down so I'm the same height as they are, and then gradually straighten up to my full height. Thus, they get used to the size of you, and the children helping you then don't feel afraid. Get them laughing as early as you can, but not a terrific roar of laughter in the first few seconds, because small children may be scared by the noise and start crying. It's burst. Uncle Silas said you could talk. I can. And he told me you were clever. I am. Well, how clever are you? Lovely. All right. Just let's hear you say the alphabet. The alphabet? No, no, no. <laughs> say every letter of the alphabet. Huh? A, B, C. Yes, go on. D, E, F, G. That's it. Yes, go on. G. Yes, yes, that's very good. Carry on. G. Yes, G what? G, whiz. No, no, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E. H, I, G, G, L, N, and a key. Oh, that's very good. Yes, go on. P. L and a key. Yes. Q R S T. That's it. Yes, go on. T. Yes, well, come on, then carry on. That's it. T. Yes, come on. T. I know all about that, but what comes after T? Supper. R S T U. That's it. W. Yes. X. Yes. As strange as it may seem, when I am entertaining children to party, they're really entertaining me in a way, and I'm learning from them as well because I've found simple things that don't cost so very much that children really do enjoy. I bought props at 10 and 20 pounds a time that I didn't think very much of. The strange thing is that I've got things included in my programme that I may not think so highly of, but the children do. And they've taught me what they actually like. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Do-do-do-do. No, no. do re Right. Do, re, da, da. That's not it. I, I know that's not it. That, that's the scale. Ah. Scale. Scale, yes. Do, re, me, and so on. Do, re, you. Yes. No. Oh. Carry on. Right. When, when, when. Oh. This is my wizard's den. This is where I keep most of the props stored, which I use in my entertainments. As a matter of fact, in here, which looks a bit like a cross between a, a sardine tin and a junk shop, I keep stored most of the props for my performances. Actually, I've over 22 hours of entertainment stored in this room. Uh, here we have a stock of ventriloquial figures, uh, which I've had some of them quite a long while, some of them are fairly new. Some America from America, one or two from Ireland, and one or two from other countries as well. Here's one which was made abroad and belonged to a fellow called Billy Donnelly, in Cookstown, a well-known Northern Ireland entertainer. Uh, this is one of a, quite a few of these uh, dogs turned out by a magical company, which I purchased and intend also using it sometime in the future again. This is also used for ventriloquism and very good for children's shows. It is essential to make a change because I go around the schools quite often. If I go to school, an entertainment in school one year and then go around the next year, although children can't remember a lesson from one day to the next, if I repeated a performance I gave before, I wouldn't be going very long before they would tell me. Also, of course, uh, different schools require different entertainment. Small children of, say, four and a half and up to six and seven years of age require a different program to children, say, of up to 11. And again, different programs from 11 to 14 or 15, as we have in the secondary and grammar schools. From my point of view, the main essential in entertainment is to be unusual, if possible, different to anyone else. I do perform several music likes, and so far again as possible, I try and make sure I'm performing something which few, or if even better still, no one else is performing at all. Here I have a German saw, which is quite sonorous, a musical saw, and which I'm intending to play now and include in my programme. So shortly, I hope to be one of the few people in Ireland who can play trees and cut them down at the same time.
But I do have here a true musical instrument, which is quite old, made round about the year 1860, a Wheatstone Duet Concertina. There are very few of these now left in the world in playable condition, and most of them are collector's items. It also has one further advantage. This instrument can mimic various sounds, and if I've no horn on the motorcycle or it breaks down, I can always duplicate it by using this, uh, like this. <laughs> Wrong chord. <laughs> My thoughts today, though I'm far away, dwell on to carnal shores. The salt sea air and the collins fair of lovely green widows. There's a flower there beyond compare that I'll treasure evermore. That grand Colleen in her gown of green, she's the rose of Aaron Moore. The wheels of my motorcycles have turned roughly 670,000 miles below me now, over 20 years of travel. And I think roughly somewhere around about 10 to 12,000 different entertainments. I'm still learning. Enjoy it. Going around, seeing people I've seen before. I've been entertaining in schools now for just over 20 years. It's nice to go back and see the same principles over and over again. But alas, in that time, nearly half the principals in Northern Ireland, at least, have left the scene. A few retired, but many of them have done the permanent retirement, like we all have to someday. I go past a school occasionally, count it own. It's no longer a school now, it's a store place. We've been waiting for all day, isn't it? Yeah. The visit from Fernie, and I want to introduce Fernie to you, and I want you to give him a great big welcome. Come on. Good evening, boys and girls. Well, of course, before I could possibly do any magic at all, I'll have to comb my hair and put my hat on. That's <laughs> Now, now, I have a bad memory, but I keep everything written down in this book so I won't forget. <laughs> I, I got a book on how to improve your memory, <laughs> but I forgot where I put the book, so that wasn't much use for me. <laughs> but I keep everything. If I forget today, you see, I, I just look at this old scrapbook and I, I, I see what's on the program then straight away. Uh, well, that's it. Yes. <laughs> Now, you made me forget. I, I'll have to look it up again now. <laughs> oh, yes, that's it. Uh, what's all the laughing about, by Dolly? Ah, yes. Mm. Well, it says the first thing on the program today is an old box trick. Now, now, there's nothing special about this box. It's just an old empty wooden box. A rather gaudily painted, and it's quite strong. It's quite strong. <laughs> oh, it is, yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to show you a little bit of magic, boys and girls. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're going to start laughing... Uh, if you're going to start laughing before I get the show started, I mean... You're never going to... Now, I'm warning you. Any more of this ridiculous laughing, I, I'll put this box away, and you won't even see the box took at all, eh? So that... now, what... Magic, I think, is perhaps... I won't say the most popular of my entertainment, but it is nevertheless one of the main features. Small children really believe in magic and actually believe the magician capable of anything. In fact, I've had children coming out asking me to do things at the end of the program, which if I really could do, uh, I'd be a millionaire in no time without being an entertainer at all. In the case of small children, I usually start by giving them quite a good laugh for a while, and in the end, the children are eager and indeed anxious to come up and help the magician. Now, we'll have to make an Irish hat, won't we? So we will then, because this hat has had quite a history. You don't see it nowadays, but this hat was pretty well the standard headdress of the old-time Irish innkeepers here in this country for hundreds of years. Strange as it may seem, when this hat found its way to England, it wasn't the innkeepers who wore it at all, but the squire of the village, the lord of the manor, and fairly well to do. Although the famous highwayman, Dick Turpin, wore this hat, but I believe he probably stole it at the point of the gun 
uh, from some poor fellow along with a man's wallet, watch and chains. Stand forward, just like that. Will you? Oh, that's about right. There you are. That's fine. Keep still. Here it is, the old three-cornered hat. <laughs> and now we take this three-cornered hat, shake it, and from a three-cornered hat, it transforms itself now into a solid, round, two-pointed hat. And we'll have to get a magic wand now for you to hold now, Marie, won't we? There we are. Where are we? Where's one magic stick for you? There it is. And just look at that, boys. Doesn't Marie make a wizard wizard, doesn't she? And now, Marie... <laughs> Of course, some items require several children. The bell band, of course, requires eight of them. This was an act which at the beginning was a complete failure, and because I hadn't thought out all the details, and I almost, uh, well, gave up the idea. But a little perseverance and thought did succeed in managing where I thought it would be a failure. That is now actually one of my most popular acts. Pull the handle off. Presenting! Bells in the air, everyone! Don't look at me. If I pat you twice, hit the bell twice. But if I don't pat you at all, don't hit the bell at all. Here we go! Oh, we didn't go. What happened? Horse feathers? Come on, I want that heat. That's it, come on. Lovely. Well done. Oh, what's happened? You looked at me, you never hit the bell. Come on. Sometimes when entertaining, I get the feeling that I should be paying the people who are watching me rather than them pay me, as I often feel I'm getting the better end of the entertainment. I love seeing children laugh. I often laugh along with them myself. And I have known at times when I've started feeling not too well or in bad form, as they say in this country, that by the end of the programme, I'm laughing along with them, enjoying myself, and it takes me out of myself too. This magic is a funny business, really, and I think it has really affected me too, because it, it's sort of a hobby as well as a living. I, I think at the back of my mind, even when I was very small and first started doing magic, that I would somehow make a living doing it. I didn't know how then, but I found the further I've gone with it, the more and more it's become part of me. And the truth is, although my early education was far away from magic or anything connected with it, I can't really at present imagine myself actually doing anything else. Speaking from my own point of view, I suppose it's been a case of necessity being the mother of invention. I never planned any of the things that happened to me, they, they just did. But looking back, I don't suppose there's ever been anyone else in the world has thought of running a full-size show from the back of a motorcycle, and I suppose no one else has been crazy enough to attempt it. <laughs>